trains are all on their feet. Go out and get them Steelers, Bradshaw and Rocky and Franco and Lee. We love you, Pittsburgh Steelers. It's been many years in coming. Hand Studios. This is WCNS Latrobe, W two forty seven CX Dairy. We're the new ninety seven three Light FM. Touchdown, Pittsburgh! Antonio Brown with another spectacular play. This is live from Steelers Training Camp with Katie and Tag on PA Talk 98.7 and 1480 WCNS. Be ready to call in. Brought to you by Bardini's Country Smokehouse, Campbell Tire Service, The Collision Shop by Jason Mignon, Latrobe Auto Group, Latrobe Center Distributing, and the Dairy Queen Latrobe. Now live from Steelers Training Camp at St. Vincent College, Katie Miller and Tank Tantlinger. That's right, we are live, and actually, we are looking at St. Vincent College just across Route 981 here in Latrobe. We have a Tank and I have a great seat at the Latrobe Chevy Ford dealership. We got to thank them for their sponsorship this season, and we have so many amazing giveaways for you today. It's awesome, and Tank has his love notes that I gave him yesterday, so we've started off this broadcast on the right foot. But Caitlin is here with our prize wheel. Not only do we have tickets to Kennywood, Idlewild, Sandcastle, she has tickets to Hershey Park, Coupons to Latrobe Dairy Queen, um, the animal place in Donegal. Living treasures, treasures. Living treasure. Treasures. I can't yes. do treasures. We also have. I said that already. Hershey Park. We have a um, autographed Antonio Brown poster, so you can enter to win that. And then we also have this very fancy lock box, crack the code thing. But anyway, uh, if you come out here and crack the code, it's a six-digit code. All you have to do is punch in six numbers. There are keys inside that box. And one of the set of keys goes to this Chevy tracks in front of me here. It's gorgeous, silver color. And the other one, oh, I think Hank Bachman may have stolen that other car. However, that was another uh, a fantastic Chevy vehicle, and you could win one of those if you crack that code. So come out and see us at the lit- Hank, are you okay? Mm-hmm. You're making noises. What are you mm-hmm. doing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hank, Hank's just off the field from practice. He was yeah. over there uh, watching as your boys in black and gold are taking the field for their last time in a pra- practice that is open to the public. So today is the last day, which I can't believe it, of the 2018 Steelers training camp. And, uh, again, practice will be closed tomorrow before the boys head out on Thursday for the second preseason game. Well, I sure to hell wouldn't call them boys. They're men. The Are, boys. The boys. Yeah, like that at wasn't... least they better start acting like men. And no, I'm going to get into men. that okay. later. They Please. better quit acting like boys. You back on your sofa? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not happy today at all. I mean, this, this nonsense that's going on with your Pittsburgh Steelers. Before we get to any of that, please do stop by the Latrobe Chevy Ford beautiful day the rain has passed and again as katie said we got this little safe it's a clear plastic box safe it's a lock box inside somebody just might win a vehicle worth twenty five thousand dollars so you don't even have to say hi to me you don't have to say hello to the beautiful katie or hank bachman who's here you could ignore us completely you might not even have liked our radio show the last month that doesn't mean you still can't win a car today. All right, let's get down to brass tacks. As I left Latrobe Memorial Field because the practice was moved there, my goodness, folks, lightning has struck in Latrobe in the worst possible imaginable way. Ben went down, and he went down hard in the gold line drill. Not quite sure what is wrong with him. It happened very, very quickly. He was down on his belly for about 10 minutes. In cases like this, the team normally surrounds him, so the prying eyes of the media and public cannot see what's going on. But he was obviously in excruciating pain. Uh, He then was able to get up after maybe 10 minutes, and he sat on an ice cooler with his head down. Again, the team surrounded him, so you couldn't see what was going on. And, again, the murmur through all the reporters were, what happened? 
In fact, Ben wasn't even wearing a helmet on the play. The best guesstimate, and this is a guesstimate that Mike McMahon, who will be joining us, is that Ben may have hit his hand on a helmet. But we don't know what happened to him. But, yeah, lightning has struck here in Latrobe. Hopefully he's fine. I don't want A.B. Uh, tweeting me, telling me to shut up, and I'm a clown because I'm reporting something that wasn't right. But it, it did send a shudder through the crowd. Ben was on his stomach for about 10 minutes there. Look, he's a football player. He's an athlete. It's probably going to end up being nothing, a big nothing. But that is the report out of Latrobe Memorial Stadium right now. A.B. was at practice, and he looked beautiful, beautiful. The backup coach was throwing passes to him. Pinpoint precision passes to the end zone. Uh, what it was the great quote by Mark Twain, Hank Bachman, the, the reports of my death are truly over. Uh, that's one of them. That's one of them, yeah. The, that, and I'm not going to heaven if there's no cigars, Mark Twain <laughs> said. Uh, or Groucho Marx or Tank Tantlinger. Somebody said that. I'm not going to heaven if there ain't no cigars. But the fact is, A.B. looked very good, very good. And, of course, the fans appreciated it. They moved over from St. Vincent's College down to Latrobe Memorial Stadium. And uh, A.B. just loves that adoration, adoration that the crowd gives him. So he looked great today. On an A.B. vein, a note, I'm not sure if you heard of about the Twitter war that my good friend Ed uh, Bouchette got Twice into. Twice a little war. Yeah, Eddie came up to me on the sideline. He was just watching practice, and I said, Ed, I, I just want you to know, to know, no matter what people write about you in the bathroom walls and what they say about you, I love you. <laughs> and he knew what I was referencing. It was, no, it was actually awesome. I mean, Ed writes, Antonio Brown lifts off practice after some early individual work. And then Antonio, I mean, A.B. responds to that. He responded to him. I don't know. I think that's kind of cool. But he says. You saw what he wrote. He wrote. <laughs> Bro, seriously, have some respect. You make an eat up clown. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just. I could, I could ask you a couple of questions about Ben. Yeah. So he went down. He went down hard. Nobody. He did, so you didn't get hit. We no, we nobody know. knew what happened. They were in an end zone drill. Man, uh, that, it was wonderful. The last day of camp, he's having his best camp ever. Exactly. Oh, this is terrific. Uh, hopefully, it's, it's much to do about nothing. But again, they were on the 20 yard line. Red zone offense going in against the first team defense, and uh, the first couple plays. I mean, he looked great. AB looked great, and uh, it, if I remember correctly, it was a, a pass to the left end zone to Juju. And Juju, you know, when the ball goes up, everybody follows the receiver. Oh, sure. Well, count one thousand two, one thousand three. Your eyes go back to the offense, and there's Ben laying on his stomach, kicking his right leg in pain down on the ground. And nobody knew what happened. So he was down for about 10 minutes. And again, the team... Doesn't sound like a hand, does it? Well, it was the best speculation because when he got up, eventually he sat on an ice cooler and he was shaking his hand. So, But I don't know, and I don't want to get a beat tomorrow that the fat Irish clown was making (laughs) stuff up on Twitter universe. But that's going to play out. We will find out what's going on. Uh, hey, you're listening live from Steelers Training Camp. It is the very last day, and because we love you so very much, we know you listen to the show because you stop by and you say hi to us at camp. You call in for our prizes. Well, we're going to do something special for you today. We're here at the Latrobe Chevy Ford right across from the airport. Katie, tell them what they can win. So much stuff, Tank. Can you believe it? Caitlin is over there. Literally, the prize wheel is spinning right at now as we speak, but we have an Antonio Brown autograph poster that you can enter to win. If you spin that prize wheel, though, you will definitely walk away with a prize. We have everything from Kennywood, Idlewild, and Sandcastle tickets. We have Hershey Park tickets, coupons to Trope Dairy Queen, uh, tickets to Living Treasures in Donegal. We have, what else do we have? Lots of good stuff. We have the cash box, the crack the code, not cash box, I'm sorry, inside the box. Uh, you Type in any six-digit code that you'd like, and if your code breaks, you know, cracks the code, you'll win. I see some car keys sitting in there and a beautiful vehicle parked right in front of us, the Chevy Trax. Uh, we oh. also had an Equinox out here as well. So you can check those vehicles out and get your chance at just driving one home. Mm. So there, don't even say hi to us. You can ignore us. And to crack the code and win a $25,000 prize. 
I mean, you got to crack the code. But good luck doing that. Mike McMahon, our favorite quarterback of all time outside of, well, Terry Bradshaw and Ben Roethlisberger, North Allegheny graduate, Detroit Lion, Philadelphia Eagle quarterback. Mike's been joining us the last week of the broadcast. He's actually still at the stadium. We're going to come back. He's going to come back in the second hour. We're going to talk some great football analysis. But, guys, I just can't believe, Hank and Katie, how quick the last three and a half weeks, I'll just call it a month, have gone. Yeah, it does go by fast. Yeah, it really does. I mean, it, it's I, it's crazy. It's like the three-week war almost, you know. <laughs> I mean, it, it is. It's like every day where um, Hank is going out to the field, talking to the players, uh, getting those interviews. I had the opportunity to – you know, step in for Hank once and, and get to experience that myself, but to see the guys coming out of lunch and um, talking to the media, so it's a pretty cool atmosphere out there. And then, of course, we love talking to the fans yes, and having yeah, the opportunity yeah. to get their opinions. And it's just incredible how many people I mean, all over the country, all over the world almost, it's <laughs> insane how many people come to Latrobe, Pennsylvania to watch the Steelers in training camp. It's just such a special place. And, you know, included in those three weeks where the, where the air show kicked us off that first weekend um, as we're coming to a close here with camp, uh, the town then will be celebrating that this is the birthplace of the banana split. So a lot going on here in this uh, yeah, the banana amazing split small split town. Up. Yeah, and then uh, not long after that, it's going to be Fort Ligonier days. We're happening, huh? I love Fort Ligonier days. I keep threatening I to dress up like an Indian. It's like Christmas. You I go to Fort Ligonier days? Yes, I love it. I've never seen you there. It, well, I, and I know everybody. I go to the parade. 14,000 people. You do. I go to the parade. You know, we sit down kind of at the bottom of the hill, save all the chairs, get some food. Then we go to the little cabin, make a bonfire. Well, I've been trying to get the ownership of uh, PA Talk and WCNS. We need a float in this thing. Well, you know, Frank Baldwin can be on it. Bill Brown is the voice. The, our, our Bill Brown is the voice. Of we the need voice. a float in the league. We can, I don't know anybody in authority. You are a talk to. Just one. I am <laughs> like Macy's. <laughs> play, <laughs> play, <laughs> the no joke can make fun of my shirt today. <laughs> he said, where are you going? Hawaii. <laughs> Uh, I got the same thing here, yeah. You, oh, you both look, of you. There you go. There right. we go. Aloha, baby. Well, you got right. a little more flowery. You look more like a surfer boy. Yeah, well, I am an old surfer. <laughs> <laughs> Sing it, Hank. Sing it. Oh, Hank, I absolutely know what one of your favorite days was. Well, weekends the whole last month. I'm going to say it was the air show. It always is. Always is. I'm always thrilled. Can't wait. When those jets come in. I get pumped. Just the, the sound of those oh, things flying overhead. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's exciting. We had a, There was a big crowd over there, 100,000 people, more than 100,000 people over two days, as as St. Vincent was jammed for the opening of camp. A lot of people that weekend. Yeah, it was, it was cool. Ordinary. It, it was really cool. Again, we said that Latrobe is the center of the universe that weekend. And certainly for us, it was. It was very exciting broadcasting literally, literally right beside the uh, airfield over there. I mean, just 100 yards from the airstrip. And uh, the, the, uh, the it's just incredible experience for the last three and a half weeks. And certainly to watch this Pittsburgh Steelers team develop into whatever they will be in 2018 has been the really the centerpiece of our broadcast. And we're going to get really into that. Just the most important takeaways as we see it after this end of three and a half weeks. Again, we're going to talk about Le'Veon Bell not being here. We're going to talk about what all of Steelers Nation has recognized, that the Steelers have done absolutely nothing, apparently at this point, to solve the problem of their Achilles heel at inside linebacker. So at this point, hopefully, and Ben isn't being rushed over to Latrobe Memorial right now to a uh, ex- blown up spleen or something, oh, but my. you know, at that point, those are the two biggest things. Where the hell is Le'Veon Bell? Not that we don't know where he is, and have they shored up the defense enough to compete with even not the Patriots? But now you got to deal with the Jacksonville Kitty Cats. <laughs> yep, that is right. So we will be covering all of those topics. After we take a quick break, so not only what Tank just ran through, we'll give you a little injury update, some social media updates, and, um, you know, we're having fun out here at the Latrobe Chevy Ford dealership off Route 981. A lot of giveaways, again, tickets to Kennywood Idlewild, 
um, you name it, Hershey Park, Living Treasures in Donegal, and we couldn't do this without our sponsors. So obviously, Latrobe, Chevy, Ford, and Latrobe Auto Group, we are here on location. And he fakes the handoff, and he throws it over the middle, and into the end zone is Eli Rogers for the Pittsburgh Steelers touchdown. Now back to live from Steelers training camp with Katie and Tang on PA Talk 98.7 and 1480 WCNS. And welcome back. This is live from training camp. I'm Katie. He's Tank. We are joined this afternoon by our very own Hank Bachman and Mike McMahon will be joining us a little bit later in the broadcast as well. Mike is a Pittsburgh boy playing ball at North Allegheny, quarterback for Rutgers, Philadelphia Eagles, and the Detroit Lions. And we opened the top of this show with Tank's news from camp as he came over here. And and camp, heads up, if you're headed out there to enjoy the last open practice um, for this 2018 training camp, it is at Latrobe Memorial Stadium tonight. So practice was moved from St. Vincent to the Trobe Memorial Stadium. And when Tank was over there, he did see uh, Big Ben go down with an injury. We will find some updates on that when when possible and, you know, correct. We don't need any of the players tweeting at us like A.B. just recently did uh, to Mr. Bouchette after he uh, said that A.B. limped off the field the other day. But to update you on a few other injuries, we have A.B. back on the field looking great. Tank said he looked awesome this afternoon from what he saw in practice before he came out to the Latrobe Chevy Ford dealership. We've got Pouncey and Gilbert back on the field, and B.J. Finney is back at practice just three days after that quad contusion, or a few days after that quad contusion. So those players are back on the field. Still out, however, T.J. Watt with that hamstring injury. Vance McDonald with his foot. Sean Davis, groin injury. Xavier Grimble, thumb and Marcus Allen with an unknown injury. And again, you know, Ben going down today, I will work hard to get some information and some updates on that, but just want to make sure that it is correct before we deliver any of that news to you. Yeah, I mean, we don't want to be, I don't want to be, because uh, me and Mike are the ones that saw, saw it. We're going to find out what happened to Ben, but it didn't look good on the surface. I mean, this guy is well, he's on the ground. If you yeah, know, that's, that's... Hello. Yeah. For 10 minutes. I mean, he's used to pain. He lives with pain. He's lived with pain all his life. He's played football. So we're all going to find out together. Sounds like somebody collided with him in it. But that's right. Yeah, because you don't touch the quarterback. No. You don't touch the quarterback. You don't need to even put a red jersey on him because everybody knows you don't touch the quarterback. Right, right. Now, I can tell you this, too, Hank. If somebody is some, imagine this, some big 400-pound guy steps on your foot in Seoul, with cleats, imagine yeah, what that yeah. would feel. Yeah, that happened when Max Starks did that exactly to Ben a couple of years ago. I remember it could happen very uh, easily. Yeah, so I don't know, but if he went down, and oh, gee, yeah. So we're going to find out. I'm sure by the end of this broadcast at six o'clock tonight, the Steelers will even tweet something out. You know, as you take a look at this Pittsburgh Steelers as they lead into the 2018 season. The big monumental gap that cost them at least an opportunity to play the, well, New England Beaners last year in the AFC Championship game was defense, defense, defense. The offense didn't leave you down. It was that darn defense that left you down. So the question to you, dear caller, dear Steelers Nation, do you think the Steelers have done enough to shore up their defense? Have they not only done enough to beat the Patriots, but now you got to take and throw in Jacksonville, who had your number last year. And don't discount any other AFC team like the Raiders or like the Titans, who have gotten better since last season. This defense may have actually taken a step back. Now, we know they didn't draft anybody, Hank and Katie, to play inside linebacker. No. Instead, they went to the Indianapolis Colts, and they said, hey, Indianapolis Colts, you guys are so good as the 30th-ranked defense in the league. Reminder, there's only 32 teams in the league. (laughs) We want your best player, your inside linebacker, Mr. Bostick, John Bostick. The sense of that makes no sense to me. I mean, there's a lot of great players out there. They could have done some things to get a quality linebacker. At this point, and what do I know from apples from oranges? 
I'm not overly impressed by Boston. He's kind of, and if you watch him Thursday night when he plays, he's very robotic. He moves very robotic. Like, I mean, it stands out against the other players on the field. Uh, I just don't think he's big enough. I don't think he's aggressive enough uh, to get the job done. And he and Vince Williams have been taking those first team reps lately. So it's almost as if they've made the decision Matty Cavage is going to be your second string inside linebacker. That all may change by that September game with the Cleveland Clowns. But they really haven't done anything to shore up that inside linebacker position. I want to go to a tape that I played uh, with an interview I got with Jerry Osowski last week about this very issue that we talk about, have the Steelers done enough? And, well, a little thought I had about last year about some guy named wearing number 92 playing linebacker. Yeah, really, yeah. Coach, a lot of people were worried coming into this new season that we didn't meet the needs of the inside linebacker either through the draft or bringing Bostick in. As the position coach, how are you feeling with the progress of the unit right now? Uh, I think we're progressing, and uh, I'm, I'm satisfied with it. You know, we, we got a long way to go. I mean, we got a lot to replace. You know, Ryan was a great player, and uh, he's not going to be out there this year. But right now, you know, it's still pretty early, but we, we have – possibilities you know what I mean like John's a good player he's experienced Tyler you know Vince is a, is a very good hard-working leader you know a lot of good qualities he has and you know you, you have to fill in for Ryan but we got it and you know we're not afraid of the challenge and, and so we're you know it's progressing and, and I'm pleased with where we're at right now this term that's been thrown around is hybrid defense that you have more undersized linebackers instead of a Brian Erlacher or a Ray Lewis that's going in the Hall of Fame this weekend. That theory of a hybrid offense with the inside linebackers, is that so they can cover pass out of the backfield with Levy on Bells? That's the premise behind uh, it? Yeah, it's twofold. You know, uh, you know, it's a passing league. You know, quarterbacks are the number one priority. And, um, you know, you get a lot of chunks throwing the ball and, you know, the more value you have as a uh, dual threat like Le'Veon is really big. So, you know, that's just how the game's going, and it's getting smaller at our level. You know what I mean? There's not, you know, fullbacks are, are they're not extinct yet, but, you know, some teams don't have them, and it's, it's a tight end. And if you have a tight end who could block and catch like Heath Miller, then you're, you're, you know, you're really good for a couple years. So you have to get gut people to cover those people and you know big linebackers okay aren't necessarily capable of doing that you know what I mean you got to have a guy who could match up with a tight end you know running down the field you know like Antonio Gates and you know uh, you know Travis Kelsey and other guys like that so you know the coverage because of the nature of the game now being more pass oriented leads you to get the guys who stop the run off the field more, and that's that's where my guys come in, you know. So, uh, you know, my guys have to learn to cover the pass better, or <laughs> you know, they're not going to be there. And, the, and these hybrids are coming in, and I, I think you know, uh, Ryan, we were lucky because he was a hybrid before the hybrid. You know what I mean? He he's an inside linebacker, but he could do everything. You know, so it was great to have him, but. Uh, like I said, you know, this year he's not going to be there. So we have to find a replacement. And then, you know, where does that come from? Does it come from my room or does it come from Coach Bradley's room? And, uh, mm. You know, the scouts have done a good job and Coach Tomlin does a good job seeing how the trends in the, in the league are going. And, and that's where we're going. And now we try to get everything ironed out. And, you know, in a couple of weeks we'll be ready to roll. Roger that. All right, one question. I know Coach Tomlin doesn't like to live in the past. He's about the future. But I was adamant last year, and you're going to call me crazy, Coach. I was adamant that James Harrison should have been moved in to inside linebacker to take over for Ryan, predicated upon his strength to take on linemen, predicated on his ability just to move laterally to cover the run from guard to tight end. Probably couldn't drop into pass coverage, but at any point was that a consideration to move James inside? Uh I don't really know the answer to that. You'd have to ask Coach Tomlin, you know, like it, it didn't come up in conversation, you know, and uh, James 
and since he's retired now, I can say he was a great player, you know, but, uh, you know, and, you know, just thinking about it, I think James could play inside, you know, I mean, I, 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 I didn't really ever see him practice in there or, you know, in some of the sub stuff, he would stand up and be behind the line. So he, he's been there. He did some in Cincinnati, but I didn't see any of that film. So, you know, that's, that's a possibility. But like I said, that, that's above above my knowledge. I didn't know. I, I would just be speaking as a fan to, to say anything. You know, so. Thanks, Coach. All right, so there you have it. We'll start with the James Harrison playing inside linebacker. Well, proposition that I threw out there last year, I was adamant about it. Instead, the Steelers went and they got Sean Spence off some couch. He was eating Doritos, chugging down Coca-Cola and said, hey, we're about to go on a Super Bowl run and we're going to eventually beat the New England Bean Eaters and go to the Super Bowl. And Sean Spence, you're our guy to fill that hole that Ryan Shazier has left. How'd that work out? Yeah, Leonard Fournette put up 110 running yards in your backyard at Heinz Field. Ran right over Sean Spence. So... Any speculation is just that. The saddest words of all the poets that are, what if, what if, what if, what if James Harrison had been put in its inside linebacker? Yeah, think about it. So, your 2018 campaign with your inside linebackers, I don't know what to tell you. I can tell you this. Vince Williams is a C-plus inside linebacker. He's no Erlacher. He's no Ray Lewis. So he's the best you got right now at inside linebacker. The guy they got from Indianapolis Colts, Bostic, well, we're going to find out. But, again, he played on the 30th ranked defense in the league. Doesn't give me great confidence. And as far as this hybrid defense where you want small linebackers to be able to cover the pass, well, that's what you're going to get this season. Now, I can tell you this. I watched the – Baltimore Ravens the other night in their preseason game. And a funny thing happened on the way to the Coliseum. The Ravens have decided to put a fullback back into the playbook. And I'm not talking just down on the goal line, but on occasion putting in a fullback into the package. There there goes Rosie Nix, our fullback right now. That's what Rosie Nix sounds like. When he's running at linebackers, I love when the Jets fly over us. It is directly over us, too. I mean, it is perfect. You just see, oh, my gosh. That's a big one. That's spirit. I know. It's amazing. We're here at Latrobe Chevy Ford. Come and see us. You know why? You could just ignore Hank Bachman. I don't know how you'll ignore the beautiful Katie Miller. Well, that's why you can ignore us. Ignore us. But what you don't want to ignore is the bounty of prizes you could win. Katie, tell them about it. Well, I, there are so many. We've got an Antonio Brown autograph poster. That is an enter to win. You can spin the prize wheel, and there are tickets to Kennywood, Idlewild, Sandcastle, Living Treasures in Donegal. We've got coupons to Dairy Queen. We've got tickets to Hershey Park. So come see Caitlin. She is manning that prize wheel right now. And we also have a Crack the Code box. So this is a... A clear box. We've got a six-digit code that you'll put on the top. And as I can look into that box right there, there are keys, car keys, that is, to a beautiful Chevy track that is sitting right in front of us. So if you come and test out whatever six-digit code your little heart desires, you will have the option to win or, you know, chance to win that Chevy track. And we're honored. Uh, fires a pass over the middle, and that's a first down to Moore. Here comes Antonio Brown. 45-40, 35-30, 25-20. He's still on his feet, and he's down at the 10. Unbelievable skills of Antonio Brown. Now back to Katie Miller and Randy Tank Tantlinger at St. Vincent College on PA Talk 98.7 and 1480 WCNS. All right, live from well, Steelers training camp via the Latrobe Chevy Ford. Hey, if you listen to the show yesterday, I'm, I'm having some fun, man, because football is supposed to be fun in the NFL, not for fun league. Called the Baltimore Ravens yesterday and told them I wanted to try out for a mascot because I made a great bird sound. <laughs> ah. Then we called the San Francisco 49ers yesterday, and well, we told them we were from Iceland, 
and we were our Iceland polar bear football team was playing the Swedish mud hens in a couple of weeks, and we needed a quarterback. And did they have the phone number for Colin Kaepernick? <laughs> so today we're going to be calling the Cleveland Browns because we want to. Well, we want to talk to uh, Todd Haley. He left some books in his locker here at St. Vincent's. So go ahead and dial, Chuck. Cleveland Browns. Hi, ma'am. I'm trying to reach uh, Coach Todd Haley's voicemail. One moment. Thank you for calling the Cleveland. Leave a message for Haley Todd. To speak to an operator, press zero. After the tone, please record your message. When you finish recording, hang up or press the pound key for more options. Uh, Coach Haley, hey, I don't know if you remember me. I'm Stosh from over at St. Vincent's. I'm my head of the maintenance department. Uh, Coach, we found your locker from last season, and uh, we found a couple of books, and we don't know what to do with them. And uh, they look like good books, Coach, and I figured we'd send them up to the Cleveland Clowns for you. Uh, what's his first one? Uh, how to win friends and influence people. That'll be uh, good up there, Coach. What's this other one? Uh, how to run an offense for stupids. So anyway, Coach, we're going to go ahead and send that up to you to uh, Cleveland up there. And you know what? We got an extra parka from the uh, maintenance guys up here in uh, St. Vincent's. We're going to send that up to you because your keister's going to get pretty cold up there, there, Coach. All right, Coach, this is Stosh with the St. Vincent's Maintenance Department saying, Go Steelers. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Hank? Is Haley, what's Haley going to do when he gets that message? <laughs> He'll freak out. <laughs> He'll send the police to St. Vincent. <laughs> well, there we go. How to call an offense for stupids. So, Steelers Nation, that is my gift to you. For Todd Haley leaving two Super Bowls, in my opinion, on the table for you. There is no doubt in my mind, in 2016, this Pittsburgh Steeler team was a great football team. And if Todd Haley would have known what he was doing, an offensive coordinator with a future Hall of Famer in Ben Roethlisberger, a future Hall of Famer in A.B., the best offensive line in the league, Le'Veon Bell, your Pittsburgh Steelers would have won a Super Bowl that year. So, Todd Haley, we wish you the best of luck <laughs> in Cleveland, Ohio. And if you want those books, Coach, we'll send them up to you. All right. We're going to collect those books, and I'm going to get some poor man from the maintenance department in St. Vincent out of jail. So I'm going to work on that. You guys go have another cup of coffee. And uh, I'm Katie, and, you know, he's, he's the mischievous tank joined by Hank Bachman and soon to be joined by Mike McMahon in a few minutes once he gets up here to the Latrobe Chevy Ford dealership from Latrobe Memorial Stadium where the Steelers' final practice of this 2018 training camp has been moved to today. So join us, and we will be back with you right after this break. And he fakes the handoff, and he throws it over the middle and into the end zone as he lands. For the Pittsburgh Steelers touchdown. Now back to live from Steelers training camp with Katie and Tang on PA Talk 98.7 and 1480 WCNS. Todd Haley, can you believe she just put me through? I can you believe she just put me through? There was an actual voicemail box. You have reached the voicemail log. Yeah, I know. See, Haley. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they like a fruit box for like... No, who prank calls people? <laughs> hey, welcome back to live from Steelers training camp. It is the last day, and it's very sad after a month as we close up shop here from live from Steelers training camp. I'm Tank Tantlinger. She's Katie Miller. Please come by and join us at the Latrobe Chevy Ford, you know, right across from the airport. You don't even have to say hi to us, but I tell you what, you can win some great prizes. You could even win, well, $25,000 worth of car. Tell them how, Katie. Simple. You just punch in the correct six-digit code over there on top of the box, and it will magically open. 
and the car keys inside of it are yours. So come join us. Caitlin also has a lot of other fantastic giveaways. We have the prize wheel, tickets to Kennywood, Idlewild, uh, Hershey Park, Living Treasures in Donegal. We've got coupons to Dairy Queen. We've got some pens, bags, and Antonio Brown autograph poster. So that is also an enter to win that you can, um, you know, put your name in a little box over there. Couldn't find my words there, Tanker. Um, but a couple other quick social media updates that we have. Love following the Steelers on Instagram and Twitter. So we've also had some really, really fun posts the last couple days here. So not only did we see Juju Smith-Schuster's dog, the cutest little French bulldog, came out and visited him at practice, and the fans absolutely loved that. We also had T.J. Watt giving away tickets to the first to the home opener, first game of the season. So some lucky fans who were sitting in the rain waiting for practice, um, they were greeted by T.J. Watt and handed out those tickets. So pretty cool. Uh, Big Ben was signing his shoes the other day and handed those out to some lucky fans as well. So definitely a great time out here at training camp uh, for the fans to get to see the players, autograph, and have a great, great time here in Western Pennsylvania. Hey, you know, Hank and Katie have done a great job tracking down some really high-end interviews for us throughout the course of training camp. Hank had one guy on his mind the whole time, and he nagged his big game on the very last day. I mean, Hank got Dylan the wave of the first day, and Pouncey, and even Big Ben at one point, and he kept telling me, I'm going to cut you the Castro tank, and I'm thinking the Castro's mean and angry most of the time. Six foot tall, Hank's maybe five eleven. You know, the Castro's six six, and Hank's going to jump in his way on the way to the chow hall. This ain't going to end good. I hope Hank has good uh, insurance. Well, guess what? Hank got the wild rhino, David De Castro, in an interview today. I asked David if he's glad camp is over. Yeah, it's nice. Nice is done. You know, it's one of the things you got to do, but you're happy when it's done. With three of you guys all pro this year, are expectations for the O line higher? <sighs> yeah, they always got to go uh, increase. You know, that's, that's just how life is, man. They always expect more out of everybody as you get older and more experienced. Speaking of older and more experienced, how has your position evolved over your career so far? Uh, I think it's uh, it's been a lot with the coaches. You have Munchak for the past four years, been uh, pretty great as long as the. The continuity with this O-line has been really nice. To be playing with the same guys, that helps a lot, um, especially at our position. Run blocking, pass blocking. Is pass blocking a little easier, I mean, less wear and tear on you? No, not with some of these guys you go against in the league. Um, it's a pretty pretty freak athlete on the other side of the ball, so I guess it depends who you're going against and the, the nature of the game, but uh, there's a lot of variables that, that go into it. Well, there's some say the Steelers O-line is the best in the league. What do you say? Uh, it's very subjective. Football's got a lot of variables, man. I think uh, everyone loves to degrade people and say he's the best, she's the best. But uh, at the end of the day, it's still a team sport, and you rely on each other. And, you know, if uh, AB's not getting open, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna look back. He's better than that to hold on the ball. You know, it's, it's simple things like that or running back sitting in the holes right making us look good. So it's, it's, it's a team effort. It really is. And uh, we just try to do our best job. This talk about the window is closing. Do you sense a, a time limit as to when you guys can again win a championship? I think the window's always closed in football because you never know when it's going to be your last, you know, your last option. Injuries, you know, old age, it's just things happen. People people come and go, and, and, and then the window's always small. Everyone in this league is trying to press and win a championship, and obviously that's our goal too. Steelers All-Pro guard David DeCastro. Back to Katie and Tank. Yeah, some really great questions there for Hank, for DeCastro. And I like the humbleness that he had, you know, saying, well, some say the Steelers are the best line in the league and that you're the all-pro. Well, it is a team game, and I like that attitude from DeCastro. And don't forget something. He is a nasty, nasty wild rhino, but at the end of the day, he's a smart cookie, too, from Stanford. So DeCastro's got a big brain in that coconut, it is. Hey, you know, a little bit before, we, if you missed it, we called up to Cleveland, and I asked for Todd Haley because he left some books in his locker here in Latrobe. Uh, that's just my weird sense of humor coming to play. But if you've listened to the show over the last couple of weeks, you've heard me vent because this really is the last chance, and right now is the last chance I'm going to get to vent against Todd Haley because it is time to move on into the future. It is time to get ready for the 2018 campaign, coincidentally against the Cleveland Clowns, who decided after their 1-31 two seasons that the best option was to get Todd Haley 
and bring them to Cleveland. Well, we wish you luck with that, Cleveland Clowns. But my rant about Haley, and if you've been listening to the show, is is deep-seated. I think the guy got handed, well, one of the best offenses in the entire league the last several years, and he did nothing with it. It was the sheer talent of Ben Roethlisberger. It was the sheer talent of future Hall of Famer Antonio Brown. It was the sheer talent of Le'Veon Bell. It was the sheer talent of Mike Munchak's team offensive line, probably the best in the league. Todd Haley had nothing to do with it. In fact, he hurt you more than he ever helped you by not letting Ben call his own plays, by not trusting that Roethlisberger knew what to do. No, Haley's ego got in the way many, many times. If you go back to that 2016 season, I guess you were okay in week one when that high-potent offense put up three points against the Eagles. Three. Fifteen points against the Dolphins. Sixteen against the Patriots. Fourteen against the Ravens. December 11th in Buffalo. Todd Haley, with all that firepower, decided the best thing to do was run Le'Veon Bell for 236 yards. Well, it took 40 brutal carries to get there. January 15th, divisional playoff round with all that firepower. Todd Haley's vaunted offense, because he's a genius, put up zero points. Oh, sure, your Steelers won 18-16 to over the Chiefs. A.B. was so elated, he went on Facebook and, well, broke a no-no and broadcasted the live locker room after the game. Why not? The Wizard of Bars put all the points on the board that day. Scored. The Wizard of Bars, 18. Todd Haley, zero. So there he goes, down the road, to Cleveland, Ohio. Well, good luck in Cleveland, Coach. We'll make sure Stosh over there at St. Vincent sends you those books, How to Win Friends and Influence People, because you're going to need it real quick in Cleveland after about four weeks of them figuring out you don't know what the hell you're doing. I'm Tank Tantlinger. She's Katie Miller. Come join us at the Latrobe Chevy Ford, because, Katie, they can win stuff. And can win a lot of stuff, including a Chevy Trax vehicle. So we have this awesome little lockbox code thing over here. You just punch in six lucky digits, and if it opens, those keys that are inside there are yours, and they're to a Chevy Trax. We also have a ton of tickets to some local theme parks, including Hershey Park, um, but Tanker, I do have a quick update here on Ben Roethlisberger. This is according to Ed Bouchette of the Post Gazette and SteelersWire.usatoday.com. Sorry, getting a uh, tongue tied there. But Roethlisberger actually fell at the end of that play that you watched in that drill, and he hit his head on, just on the grass. So he was pictured holding his head, um, and and he had left practice. It is precautionary right now but he was not wearing a helmet during that drill, oh. um, and he did fall and hit his head on oh, the ground. Oh, dear God, that's not good at all. It's not good at all. So That's not good at all. Hopefully. He, again, he was down on the ground for 10 minutes. So he was, it, was a, it was a goal line drill. The Steelers were working on their red zone passing offense, 20 yards out, going up against the first team D. And again, he threw a ball to the left. Juju missed it. Of course, everybody looked that way where the ball went, and when your eyes went back, there was Ben laying on the ground, and nobody really knew what had happened to him at that point. So I trust Eddie Bouchette uh, with the analysis. I'm sure the team immediately put out, told the reporters what was going on. So hopefully it's nothing, but a head injury is a serious situation. And fans, we will keep you updated as we get more information. But, you know, hopefully with it being on the ground on a grass surface, um, you know, hoping that he will be okay. So I am Katie. He's Tank. You're listening to Live from Training Camp. We are at the Latrobe Chevy Ford dealership as the team is taking their final practice that is open to the public of this 2018 training camp there at Latrobe Memorial Stadium today. Practice will be coming to a close very shortly, but stop by Latrobe Chevy Ford, hang out, win some awesome prizes. We're going to take a quick break, and after this, we'll be talking some more football. Unbelievable skills of Antonio Brown. Now back to Katie Miller and Randy Tank Tantlinger at St. Vincent College on PA Talk 98.7 and 1480 WCNS. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I 
All right, welcome back to Live from Steelers Training Camp. I'm Tank Can- Tanlier. She's Katie Miller. Hank Bachman's around here someplace. I think I saw him just peel out of here in a blue convertible Corvette. I'm sure of it. And how he got that Corvette is we're sitting here at the Chevy Latrobe Chevy Ford today on a beautiful day. The clouds have passed by. Stop by and say hi to us. We've got some great prizes you can win. You can actually win an opportunity to win a car today worth twenty five thousand dollars. What is that, Katie, over there? Is the that... opportunity. You just get it. Oh, you just get it. You just just get come it. here, say, hey, where's that box? What is that? A it's like acrylic blocks and they're in there's two car keys and we'll give you a chance to punch in the winning code and if you get the winning code man you're going to be running around the parking lot happy 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 because you're winning a twenty five thousand dollar car there's only one way to do that stop by and see us at the trope chevy and ford katie and there's other prizes over there too right there are caitlin has our prize wheel and you can win tickets to kennywood idlewild hershey uh, you can win tickets to, what else, Hershey Park. I already said Hershey. Where else are we going? Uh, Donegal, Living Treasures. That's where we're going. And we have an Antonio Brown autograph poster. So that is an enter to win as well. We have a, plenty of coupons as well from local uh, businesses, from our sponsors, including Latrobe Dairy Queen. And we've got to thank them, too. So not only thanking the Latrobe Auto Group and Latrobe Chevy Ford, but Latrobe Dairy Queen, Latrobe Center Distributing, the Collision Shop, Campbell Tire Service, and Bardini's Country Smokehouse. And Hank Bachman is joining us again here. We listened to one of his interviews um, just before this past break, David DeCastro. So how, how uh, tell me about his stature there, Hank. DeCastro. Big guy. Oh, well, he's... Overwhelming? He's all pro. I think he's in his uh, seventh season. He's uh, listed six, I think he is, six five. Okay. 325, 330, something like that. And uh, I've always found him very interesting. Offensive linemen tend to be pretty articulate people generally. And uh, David and Alejandro, Alejandro Villanueva, mm-hmm. it's a song, isn't it? It, it is. It, it, it sounds is. like Antonio Carlos Jubim invented his I love name. It. You can make it. So, Antonio, uh, I'm sorry, the Alejandro. Castro from Stanford, though. I yes, he's Stanford, right. You got to have something in that coconut. Right, Tanger? Ah, nah. Coconut. Nah. <laughs> but, uh, but they're both they're both smart guys and they hang out a lot together, Alejandro and De Castro do. And Alejandro is wrapping up his MBA at the Tepper Business School at CMU. So these guys That's you know, impressive. Yeah, I mean no. These guys uh they have they have something to say. So I talked uh, talked to him today. But they're you know, they're awesome they're physically awesome guy. You know, that that's the only word. Yeah, no, it is. It is. It truly is. But what amazes me, too, not only some of those guys in person and how big they are, but, you know, you, you have some other guys as well that it's amazing how quick they are. Yes. Um, they're, they're vertical jumps. Uh, what, just because they're, they're not that tall or as big as you would expect sometimes without their pads on. Seeing Correct. them Correct. walk out of that um, cafeteria just in sweat, you yeah. know, and, and yeah. not seeing them in their in their football uniform. So it's Pretty, uh, pretty funny to see that. Yeah, so I, I was in talking with Mark Kessler, a uh, longtime salesman, really an articulate guy, a great spokesman for the Trove Chevy Ford. What is the latest on Ben? I missed. Yep, so we, we do have it. Uh, we did get an update from Ed Bouchette and also through Steelers Wire. Dot usatoday.com, okay. um, and Ben did not have his helmet on during that drill in practice, and he tripped and actually just fell and hit his head on the grass. Oh, the my goodness. So but what, he was down. I mean, you know, Tank saw it. What, you know, he, he was watching the ball, and by the time his eyes got back to Ben, Ben was on the ground for quite some time. So he must have hit his head pretty hard. I mean, it, Well, wait a minute. He it, fell? He wasn't hit? Nobody collided with him? Yeah, that, nobody knows yet. Nobody knows. Nobody knows anyone. I mean, you would think maybe what, there was a scuffle of the feet or something. I don't, I don't know. Ball like, uh, you have to understand, he threw the ball. You follow the ball to Juju in the end zone, 25, 30 yards down the field. You count the end zone into it. So by the time the ball's in the air, okay, 1,001, 1,002, the play happens, 1,003, 1,005. Oh, Juju dropped the ball. You stare. Then by the time you're going back to look at Ben, at least 10 seconds sure. have passed. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever happened to him, whether his feet got tangled, whether somebody ran into him, 
we're going to find out by, trust me, by 6 o'clock tonight, KDK and Channel 4 are going to know, but the very fact that he hit his head is not a good thing. I'm sure it's going to be fine, and we're going to the Super Bowl in Atlanta this year. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm an optimist. Joe's over it's there. Here we I'm an optimist. Uh, Hank's just been served uh, a warrant. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. Hey, I want to talk about the other big, uh, you know, news in camp this year. We talked about the departure of Todd Haley. And if you're with me on this, I couldn't be happier. Good luck, bum the voyage. I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll see Cleveland in the AFC Championship game this year. Not. The other thing, too, with big camp news is Le'Veon Bell. And this is what it really comes down to at this point. Camp's done. He's not going to walk away from $14.5 million, so he's coming eventually to play football for your and mine Pittsburgh Steelers in 2018. So the only real question is this. Is he going to be as good as he could have been if he was in camp? No, he's not. We saw the rust last year through the first four games. You have a problem this year in the first four games. You got the Cleveland Browns the first week in Todd Haley. Count that as a victory. But the problem is you got Kansas City and you got Baltimore in week four. You got a problem. You can't count on Rust on Le'Veon Bell. So the only real question is, oh, should he be in camp or shouldn't he? Should he be in strip clubs on his own time? Are his teammates upset? None of that counts now. All that's behind us. The only question is, is he going to be any good when he shows up? And more so, and you know what? I don't think a lot of you care at this point about the next point. Because I don't care about the next point. And the only other question is this, the second one. Because of his behavior not coming to camp, as a petulant child, because of his behavior being in strip clubs in Miami while his, well, as his teammate Ben Roethlisberger arrived on the ground in pain today with a head injury at La Trobe Memorial Stadium, has he hurt himself to get the big money contract? The very reason he held out like a petulant child, not being here with his teammates as his quarterback arrived on the ground in pain today. So that's the only other question. And I really don't care how much money the guy ever makes. And yes, I get it. He is supposed to make as much money as he can because tragedies like the Brian Shazier, Ryan Shazier situation do happen. You should try to make as much money as you can from playing football, because you only play for a short period of time, hopefully in a blessed long life. Football is only a small part of your life, and you're going to get hurt, and you're going to get beat up, and you're going to wake up in the morning 40 years from now limping. You're going to wake up in the middle of the night with your neck hurting. Those things are inevitable, especially Le'Veon Bell. He has had the hell beat out of him. Because Todd Haley didn't know what to do, so he ran him 40 times against Buffalo, and his knee got ripped up because Todd Haley was a horrible offensive coordinator and said, well, I'll just give it to Le'Veon Bell again because I don't know what play to call. So I see all that. So those are the only two questions. One, is Le'Veon Bell going to be productive for the first four weeks of the season? Probably not. Is that going to hurt your Pittsburgh Steelers, my Pittsburgh Steelers? Yes. Yes, it is. The second thing being is, by him being a petulant child, has he hurt his chances of getting that Todd Gurley contract? Yes. Yes, it has. So as Le'Veon enjoys his day at Miami Beach tonight, heading out to the clubs down there, to the Clevelander and the strip clubs with his girlfriend, Ben Roethlisberger is probably going to get a CAT scan over at Latrobe Memorial tonight. So think about that, Le'Veon. All right, we're heading to commercial break. 
And I'm scared because the sky's looking like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz are coming our way. Thank Tantlinger for look live from Steelers Training Camp. Katie Miller, Hank Bachman, and we'll be right back. And he throws it over the middle and into the end zone as Eli Rogers for the Pittsburgh Steelers touchdown. Now back to live from Steelers Training Camp with Katie and Tang on PA Talk 98.7 and 1480 WCNS. Hey, welcome back. This is live from training camp, and today we are actually live from the Latrobe Chevy Ford dealership here, just outside uh, overlooking Route 981 and overlooking the Latrobe Airport. We did just pull our table inside here to one of the garages because I uh, got a little storm lurking in the background. But Mike McMahon, special guest, just walked up to the table. He was at practice this afternoon, and um, we will catch up with Mike and see exactly what uh, his breakdown of uh, practice. But actually, Mike, we did just get an update um, that Ben hit his head. He yeah. wasn't wearing a helmet, um, and he seemingly tripped. Did someone hit him? Um, but he did. I'm sorry. This airport's right there. So no, he, no, no, no. Oh. He wasn't wearing his helmet? No, you, no. Are you sure? Because I thought he did have his. I wasn't sure. I, I think so the they were the team the drill. Reports are showing that he didn't have his helmet on. I'll pull up that picture. Well, did somebody hit him? Did somebody collide with no, him? No, I think someone might have stepped on his foot and he fell down. Uh, oh. It, to me, I either thought uh, it, it looked like when he went. Yeah, but that was after when he was on the so ground. You think he had his helmet on? Yeah, I think he had it, on, but he doesn't wear a chin strap in practice. So uh, uh, he yeah he never buckles up during practice. Uh, he, you, you'll see he never has a, the chin strap on, uh-huh. um, which is common amongst a lot of quarterbacks. Yeah. Um, and uh, but sometimes you would put it on just for the team drills. But he didn't. He didn't. I know he doesn't wear a chin strap out there during that period. He did. I, I believe he had his helmet on. I think. He, it looked like, you know, someone might have got pushed back through the ball. A lot of times uh, the D linemen and the O linemen are still pushed in and they kind of stumble and you get your foot caught on, so he might have fell down. Uh, originally I thought he either had his foot stepped on or he hit his hand on a helmet, but um, but I wasn't sure exactly. And, Does he have a concussion? No one said anything. He left the field, uh, so uh, the rest of the practice, Landry took uh, a few of the reps. Uh, Mason Rudolph got a ton of reps. And Dobbs got a few here and there uh-huh. sprinkled in. Uh, they finished the practice with a uh, two-minute drill, and Rudolph ran the reps there. So it looks like Landry, uh, we see our reports as well, that he will not be playing Thursday night in that second preseason well, game. So what does that Yeah, I think if, it, if it's Ben, if it's between, uh, if Ben and Landry are sitting out, I think uh, Mason and uh, Dobbs will be taking the reps. I I think they're trying to get uh, Mason Rudolph as many reps as he possibly can to see how comfortable he uh, how comfortable he is, uh, and they're giving Josh a chance to probably audition, probably for a uh, another team possibly, unless they think um, unless they think Landry uh, if, if Dobbs can really step up and play well and see if he can handle the load, uh, and then they'll see what they're going to do with Landry. But right now. Uh, Again, I think they're just trying to check out Mason Rudolph. I think he may be the one that starts on uh, Thursday. I'm not sure, though, but I, if I had a guess, I would say he's going to get a significant more playing time than Josh Dobbs. Other than the news of Ben uh, going down and leaving practice early, anything else significant that you took away from today's practice? No, um, it, it, you know, uh was it Hayward Bay? He uh, seemed like he tweaked his hamstring a little bit near the end. He was over there with the training staff, uh, and he, he even said, you know, I could hear him. He was talking, you know, I kind of tweaked it. I kind of saved it. I felt it. You know, they were checking him out, and they just said, you're done for the day. Sit it down. Sure. So they sat him down. They sat AB down for the rest of the day after that. He looked great when we saw him. He was good. Mike and I were watching the end zone drills. The wide receivers first, individual groups were going into the end zone, mm-hmm. uh, running the tight line on the back of the end zone. They all looked good, actually. Yeah, and, you know, I don't think anything's wrong with uh, A.B. I think they're just giving him a rest. Um, the last practice, he's not going to be going. You know, I'm not sure how much he'll be playing against Green Bay, if, if any at all. But when you got a pro bowler like that and a veteran, they tend to sit those guys down a little bit more here and there, and you're noticing that throughout practices. And, um, you know, I've been on certain teams where, you know, 
veterans play, and, and sometimes they, they sit them out. And for, basically for the last half of practice, A.B. was on the sideline just relaxing. Um, you know, and Mikey, I'm, I'm great with that. Just before you came and joined us on air, I was on my Le'Veon Bell rant, you know, and uh, with Ben going down with his head injury, even makes Bell even look worse right now. Well, you know, he's he's sitting out, and it's not like camps used to be the way, you know, the, how they, you know, years ago. The collective bargaining agreements changed that. There's no two-a-days uh, the way they used to be. It's not, <laughs> it's not the mental grind as much either. And uh, and from what I've seen from the Steelers, they te- they they tend to take care of their players and rest the the big name guys more than any other team I've ever been around. Maybe that's the new norm. I don't know, but uh, he definitely should be there getting some work in. Uh, but again, uh, it's his decision. You know, he's uh, allowed to make that decision. I saw some reports that people were trying to say, "Hey, trade Bell for uh, Khalil Mack out in Oakland." Dude, I was saying it three weeks ago. Did I not on this show? I said it three weeks ago, yeah, and a couple part. people laughed at me. And yeah. so would you make that deal right now? I, I don't know. I, it, I don't know. I, I, it just depends. You don't know what type of shape he's in. Uh, you can always make that change in the season, too. I mean, um, but, you know, Connors looks good at running back. You have a couple other guys back there. I mean, it just depends. I mean, I don't know. Le'Veon Bell is a great offensive weapon, and uh, it's just... Lev Bell's a potential Hall of Famer. But he gets his head out of his third point of contact. Exactly, but <laughs> but the thing is, is he, he, it's a new off... I, I know they have the, the quarterback coach, and he, he's come from uh, the Bruce Arians era and the Todd Haley era, and I'm sure the offense is pretty much uh, the same terminology it's been the past few years, and it's probably got a couple new things in, but, uh, you know, Todd Haley used Le'Veon Bell a certain way, you know, you know, the new offensive coordinator, uh, it's, he's got to figure out how he's going to use Le'Veon. And I'm sure he has an idea, but at the same time, it doesn't help when he's not here. You know, I'm saying Tantlinger, that's Katie Miller, he's Mike McMahon. Mike played for the Detroit Lions, Philadelphia Eagles. He's been in the trenches. He's North Allegheny product. Mike and I were down on the sidelines earlier in practice today. And, Mike, I really liked what you said about what, the new offensive coordinator, Randy Fitchner, mm-hmm. is. He's kind of, a, and you were just alluding to this, he's an amalgam of Bruce Arians, Haley, and what he will now become with his vision of this offense. Elaborate on more of that. Yeah, I think with uh, with Coach Arians, he was a more down-the-field guy, uh, you know, a little bit more match protection, get and push the ball off the field, and, and Ben was uh, very good at that. And, it, and the Steelers had some big plays doing that, and then when when Coach Haley came in, he did a lot of short, you know, get the ball out of your hand quicker, you know, take the pressure, take the hits off the quarterback, and uh, let the receiver. It, it was kind of a version of a um, a version of a West Coast offense where you get the ball out quick, let the receiver run with it afterwards. And so now, since he's been with the Steelers, he was with the uh, with Arians for so many years. Uh, when he first came here in 2007, I believe, and then when Haley took over. So I'm sure he's gonna run, you know, Coach Haley's offense, but I think he's going to, like, my opinion, I think he would add in more of an Arian-style air attack, pushing it upfield. He's got some weapons. He's got some good size receivers. And, um, you know, you've got a Pro Bowl quarterback, so might as well. But it'll be interesting to see. Again, you don't know which direction he's going to go in. And, and I'm sure he has an idea of where he wants to go. But, again, until you get everyone here, and the season starts, and you've got live bullets, and everything's going on. You have to deal with injuries. He's going to have to be, you know, trying to feel his way along of what he wants to do and how, which direction he wants to take the offense. Get it out quicker, push it upfield. What do you want to do? Do you want to pound it more? Again, you don't know until the season gets going. One of the things I like about Randy Fitchner is I think, and we've talked about the chess game element. Mm-hmm. Uh, Todd Haley had no clue what the chess game was, uh, in my opinion. He had no idea how to play the game of chess according to football rules. I think Fitchner does and will use the pieces he's given not to, you're going to fit into my concept of my offense. He's going to step back and go, I got an all-pro quarterback. I got an all-Hall of Famer wide receiver. What else What else do I got to cook dinner with? Well, I think he's more open-minded. And I think, I mean, it's hard to say he's going to be more productive point-wise 
but he may very well be more productive point-wise. Could you imagine this team putting up 52, 56 points a game? Uh, I, personally, I think they were more talented last year on offense, but um, you, you don't know. Uh, again, and it's a fine line of being too open, taking other people's opinions, because now all of a sudden he doesn't really have an identity himself. He has to establish his own identity and what he wants to do. Now, you said, you know, Coach Haley doesn't do the chess match. Uh, chess, chess match, well, we'll find out the first week, but uh, you know, he has his identity. He knows what he does, and that's what he's going to do. So, you want a little bit of stubbornness to establish your identity. At the same time, you want to be able, be able to adapt to injuries and to the pieces that you get. Um, but again, uh, you know, you never know until the first week of the season. Uh, to me, the preseason, I've been on teams where we've lost every preseason game, and then we won a few games. And then I've been on teams where we won every preseason game, and then it just was just downhill from there. Again, you don't know until the first week. The first week you got, you know, Todd Haley, who's already getting in arguments with Doug Williams over in Cleveland. I heard there's some You've fights. heard that room? I've heard some fights going on. Oh, it was reported on ESPN that there's some battles going on between the offense and defense over there already. So uh, I, I love it. Well, you were down still at Latrobe Memorial Stadium. Uh, Stosh from St. Vincent's Maintenance. We called the Cleveland Browns. Okay. Very professionally asked for Coach Todd Haley's voicemail. And they made the mistake of giving us oh, no. Todd Haley's <laughs> voicemail. So Stosh uh, said, hey, Coach, you left a couple books in your locker. We're going to mail them up to you. How to win friends and influence people, because you're going to need that after about four weeks in Cleveland. That's good timing, too. And the second book, uh, Coach, you forgot in your locker, uh, How to Run an Offense for Idiots. No, oh, boy. Yeah, I'm pretty harsh on them, which you know. You pretty know. But, uh, yeah, Haley's going to get that uh, at about 7 o'clock tonight or 2 in the morning. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see when uh, the first week of the season. But, again, uh, it's going to be interesting to see which way uh, – Coach Fitchner goes and what she decides to do. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, you're listening live from Steelers training camp. That's Mike McMahon, former professional quarterback. But like I like to say, once a Marine, always a Marine. He's a pro quarterback, baby. She's Katie Miller. I'm Tank Tanlinger. We're hunkered down. It sounds like we're in some uh, cave in the mountains of Afghanistan. We are. <laughs> we took refuge in a uh, garage here at the Latrobe Chevy Ford. But that doesn't mean you can't come and say hi to us. More importantly, put your ears up and listen to this. If you stop by and see us, you have a chance to win an automobile. Katie, tell them about it. Oh, I'm telling them about it. Mike and I are over here Googling uh, Todd Haley's problems in Cleveland. But, yes, Caitlin is here. We have the prize wheel. We've got tickets to Kennywood. Oh, you know what? As a matter of fact, I got two right now. Caitlin was nice enough to drop them off to me. But tickets to Kennywood, Sandcastle, or Idaho. You can use them at any place. I've got a pair. It's going to go to the first caller. Don't worry. You don't have to talk to Tank. I know he's scary. Sure. Just talk to Chucky in the studio, and we will mail these to you as soon as possible. So give us a call at one eight five five pa talk one Call Chucky. you got two tickets to Kennywood, Sandcastle, or Idlewild. But you are listening to Live from Training Camp via the garage here at Latrobe Chevy Ford as this storm is quickly approaching. But we are joined by Mike McMahon, former NFL quarterback for the remainder of our show and we'll be talking some more football right after this Unbelievable skills of Antonio Brown. now back to Katie Miller and Randy Tank Tantlinger at St. Vincent College on PA Talk 98.7 and 1480 WCNS hey welcome back this is live from training camp via the Latrobe Chevy Ford dealership and we are had to hunker down in the garage here uh, just due to this passing storm, but it looks like it might be breaking up a little bit out there. We are honored to be joined again by Mike McMahon, former NFL quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles and Detroit Lions. Mike is from North Allegheny. You've got to love that laugh from our very own Hank Bachman. He has joined us this afternoon for our final broadcast of the 2018 training camp. And, oh, never mind, that storm did not break up my life. Um, coming down now here uh, outside the Latrobe Chevy Ford dealership. But just wanted to, real quick, Jennifer from Somerset did win those tickets to Kennywood, Idlewild, and somewhere else fun. Not sure where that was. But, Hank, what you got? Well, first of all, the the latest news Ben's going to be okay. Is that what we're hearing? He says. We're hearing that, but he's going to. 
obviously go through the necessary protocols, okay. but he did okay. hit his head on the field. All right. Well, I thought there was a quote that he told Marcus Gilbert or somebody, I'm going to be all right. Yeah. That's true? Yes. That's yes. true. Okay, yes. good, good. Well, what we want to announce is a big event from the Trobe Chevy Ford, the region's largest lease turn-in program. You may qualify. Your status as a current leaseholder may qualify you for this event. So there are myths about leasing. One, you can only deal with the originating dealer. The fact is you're not locked in. Another myth is early termination is costly and causes penalties for leaseholders of vehicles. Sometimes it's to your advantage to terminate early. That's the fact. So uh, to check out this offer, again, the region's largest lease turning program at Latrobe Chevy Ford. Give them a call, 724 537 7723. Or, of course, stop in Latrobe Chevy Ford, landmark dealership in Westmoreland, at the intersection of Route 30 and 981. Sounds like a good deal. Okay, kids, put your helmets on. Here we go again. Helmets on. Got him. Sounds like a good deal to me. I tr- you know what? Hank's like the voice of Walter Conkright. If he says it, I trust it, baby. <laughs> All right. Is. Talking some more football here. We were talking about, well... The, what was it, the Miss Congeniality Award? One thing's for sure, Todd Haley ain't never going to win it. And, Mikey, it sounds like he ain't going to win it in Cleveland. What's going on on the Internet, you read? I guess uh, him and Greg Williams, there was a little bit of contact with the quarterback uh, in practice, which is which any team I've ever been around is a big no-no. I've actually seen a, uh, a rookie free agent get thrown off the field and cut right there on the spot for doing so. But it also depends on who the quarterback is, if it's a starter or if it's a backup. So apparently someone ran into the quarterback, uh, Todd Haley, yelled out, don't touch the uh, F-bomb quarterback. And then Greg Williams replied and said, somebody's got a block for him. Uh, it's not the defense's fault. And then they kind of got into it from there, back and forth. Uh, Coach Hugh Jackson allowed it to go on for a little bit. And then uh, he said, uh, you know, you like to have a little fire on each side. But then he said enough was enough, and, and he stopped it. But um, I – I can't imagine that ever happening uh, in Pittsburgh. Uh, I think um, no, you get knocked on his ass. You can't. You can't. I mean, <laughs> because yeah. our coaches like to fight. Like, imagine him getting in it with Joey Porter. Well, you have <laughs> well, Porter would be waiting for him out in the well, parking lot. You have two egos you know, with uh, with Greg Williams and you have Todd Haley, and both have big egos. And the thing is, they got to be on the same page because you know you're trying to teach a team how to become a team. And they're fighting themselves, and that's and that's not good. You're gonna already have issues of the. Uh, you know, offense versus defense. And, you know, once a game is lost or won, they're going to be looking at each other saying, well, the defense did their job or the offense did their job. You can't have that. Uh, You know, Coach Jackson needs to step up and kind of put that to bed a little earlier. I don't think Coach Tom would allow it to happen. And I don't think uh, Coach Fickner or Butler, they have too much respect for each other to uh, get into it in front of the players. So, you know, sometimes you have some egos rubbed, but you got to make sure you don't get into in front of the players. So Stosh should actually drive that book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, and drive it up to Cleveland tonight. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I, here's the thing. I think Coach Haley has a point. You don't touch the quarterback. But I think when he drops the F-bomb in there, he's going to rub Greg Williams the wrong way, so he's going to fire back. At the same time, Coach Williams probably could use that book, too. There you go. There you go. Hey, things get heated, and you actually need it to get a little chippy sometimes, Mike, especially the big hogs. Yeah. Defense, offensive linemen, let's face it, it's 90 degrees. The last thing you want to be doing is bashing your body into another human being. And, Mikey, I know you've seen it as many times as I have. It just happens. Two big linemen start going at it or running back and linebackers. And coaches actually know how to use that to feed the team. That, that adrenaline to get guys go, and they let them go at it for a while as long as nobody's getting hurt. And really, what damage can you do when you're hitting each other in the hand, head with a helmet on? Well, it's true. It's just uh, there's sometimes I've seen it come to a point where the helmets get ripped off, and then that's when it can get dangerous. And uh, Bill Fralick almost ripped my whole head off one time. <laughs> yeah, well, I've, my whole head. I've seen the helmet get ripped off and swung at another player before, so it, it got ugly. Oh. And, and there was, uh, you know, someone got cut right after that as well. So. Again, it's a fine line of letting it go too far. And and the thing is, it's just you've got a lot of testosterone out in that field, a lot of pent-up anger, and, you know, all it takes is one little cheap shot or one little extra effort after the whistle, and it's going to set someone off. But it, what, more importantly, it's what happens in the locker room afterwards. 
the guys hug it out or whatever. Don't worry about it. So a lot of guys get into fights and they become best friends on teams from it. You know, for them, you know, I've never really seen, for the exception of the the, the Terrell Owens and the Don McNabb, I've never really seen a fight in the locker room. Typically, once it gets in the locker room, it's done. It's over with, and and, it, and you move forward. And uh, that's that's the one good thing about football. It brings guys together, and you kind of you hatch it out, and then you it's over with. It's done. Move forward. And it helps build the team, but. Uh, it, it actually sounds like Todd Haley's up to his old tricks up there in Cleveland. So again, he he is to me he is the gift that keeps on giving. We're here at the Latrobe Chevy Ford. I'm Tank Tanliger. She is Katie Miller. He is the quarterback Mike McMahon. It's our last day at camp. I'm sad. It's gone so quick. Mike's joined us for the last couple broadcasts, and you know you spend a week a uh, month in Latrobe during training camp, and you'll fall in love with the place all over again how people are just so nice and the beauty around the area. Um, so it is kind of sad for me to see camp winding down, but it's also exciting. That means that kickoff against the Cleveland Clowns, Katie, is just around the corner. It is much closer, but uh, I know your feelings about that game, and Mike had a, a, a few, you know, kind of didn't quite agree with that. So I know Tanker thinks we're just going to mow him over, but you said that's not the case. Yeah, I, I, it'll be interesting to see. Again, it's just too much, too much uncertainty. You don't have Le'Veon on camp. Uh, you're not sure wh- who's going to show up. You got, you're going on an away game. You got a lot of new talent, a lot of new weapons in Cleveland, a new offense. Uh, it's the second year for Greg Williams as defensive coordinator. So, um, and you know they've got a chip on their shoulder now that they're tired of getting beat on. So uh, we'll see. Well, why don't we do this? Let's go to commercial break early. Okay. That's new for us. And when we come, yeah, it is. <laughs> well, normally we were talking, talk. We'll go to commercial break early and when we come back. Well, the most important thing is wins and losses. And do your Steelers have a chance to make it to Atlanta, the Super Bowl? And we're going to go through this regular season schedule, baby. I'm Tank, yeah. Mike, Katie. We'll be back live from Steelers training camp via the garage of Let's Rope yeah. Chevy Ford. You know what it is. Black and yellow, black and yellow. Ten FM ninety eight seven. Ben in the gun and he fakes the handoff and he throws it over the middle and into the end zone is Eli Rogers for the Pittsburgh Steelers touchdown. Now back to live from Steelers training camp with Katie and Tang on PA Talk ninety eight seven and fourteen eighty WCNS. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, here. Here. coming back, Tank. Hey, welcome back. This is a live from training camp. I'm Katie. He's Tank, joined by Mike McMahon. It's live from a garage. That's why we, <laughs> folks, if it sounds like we're in a cave in Afghanistan, it's because the rain has sent us into a uh, garage here at Latrobe Chevy Ford or broadcasting from. Yeah, I listen to it on the speakers. It's fun. Oh, good. It's fun. But as long as we're intelligent, articulate, entertaining, people will not change the station. Well, that's. That's great. I'm, I'm not so comfortable with our so garage done. during the storm right now. Mike's just telling me a story how yesterday he almost got struck by lightning, literally like feet away from him. It hit a tree. So I'm glad we're sitting around all this metal and electricity right now. But yeah, you know, let's one go. part of the soccer players last night, the one guy did get hit. Uh, I was up at uh, South Hills Country Club, and uh, boom, it was literally three parking spots from me, and it's right through the tree. Oh, jeez. That's nothing to mess with. Nope. Nothing to mess with. Hey, it's all about wins and losses. It's all about your Pittsburgh Steelers trying to get down to Atlanta to another Super Bowl. Stairway to seven, baby. All the other stuff doesn't matter in a couple of weeks when we go up to Cleveland against the Clowns. Le'Veon Bell, Ben hitting his head. None of it will really matter because at that time it will be time to kick the ball off. Or will it matter? Will it matter that Ben just hit his head today and we don't know where he'll be at the start of the season? Will it matter that Le'Veon Bell is going to have uh, sand in his sneakers and rust in his uh, belt there? But anyway, let's see what this season is going to shape up to be, guys. As we said, Sunday, September 9th, 1 o'clock, your Pittsburgh Steelers up in the Cleveland Clowns, the mistake by the lake. Mike McMahon, how do you think your Pittsburgh Steelers are going to do? Uh, it's a tough one. I think uh, I got to give the edge to Cleveland right now, just because just Le'Veon's not in camp and uh, there's too much uncertainty. But the Browns have loaded up. 
I they mean, they've they off, they've off got the... that chip on their shoulder. Uh, you know, they've got a new offensive coordinator. Uh, I and the one good thing that they have going for them in this game is, yeah, they have. You know, I know you think it's a bad thing to have Todd Haley, but they have Todd Haley, and he knows the Steelers better than any other coach in the league. And he's been going up against them for so many years in practice every day, so I'm sure he knows the ins and outs of the defense. Yeah, but Todd Haley ain't putting on no helmet. In fact, Todd Haley never put on a helmet. He never played football outside of junior high school. That's one of my major complaints. But, about he's, got, but he's got guys that have, and I he's know. got guys putting on the helmet. So it, All right, so call it win or loss. I, I have a feeling that's going to be a loss. I didn't say it, folks. Mike McMahon did. I'll give you the address on Facebook later. You can go burn down his front yard or something. I don't that know. one scares me. <laughs> hey, and that's what I'm talking about, the rust from Le'Veon Bell. The Kansas City Chiefs come to Pittsburgh for the season or opener. I tell you what, Kansas has been a raspberry seed in our tooth for 30 years, including when Mark Royals and the Steelers went down there, the old punter for the Steelers, way back in the 1990s, and they, they unexpectedly cleaned our clock. What do you say, Mike? I like Pittsburgh. You know, you got Patrick Mahomes, uh, his first year really starting as a quarterback. He's young. Um, it's a home game. Uh, I like Pittsburgh. I think you're going to see Keith Butler's uh, defense. Remember, they had a record year in sacks last year. Uh, Cam Hayward with 12. I think you're going to see that as an experiment game, you know, with the Predator. Uh, Terrell Edmonds, the Predator, uh, and a lot of blitz packages there in Pittsburgh that day. You're at home. You're comfortable. It's Kansas. you got the young quarterback. He's got a big arm. He's yeah, gonna go take, after him. He's going to want to take some chances as well. So it's going to give the defense a lot of chances for turnovers. You know, talking a little bit sidetrack on Edmonds today, we've been watching him, you and I, Mike, uh, playing at linebacker depth. And the first part of uh, the practice today went down with the linebackers, and they really had him at linebacker depth. And, uh, I had visions of Andy Russell in my head. They had him right up there. And it was really they were, they were going through uh, uh, defensive um, calls with a split backfield, who's going to take who and what. It was very interesting. It was man coverage into a zone. Mm-hmm. But to see him that up close and personal with the linebackers, is, uh, I think it's going to be very interesting. But I expect a lot of blitzing against Kansas and a victory. Heading down to Tampa in week three, Pittsburgh people love Tampa Bay, man. They love going down there and partying. So how are the Steelers fair on a Monday night game in Tampa, Mike? Tampa's without their starting quarterback. Uh so I think they'll do uh, well there. All right. Back home, I hear the Baltimore Ravens have a new mascot, and he'll be here in Pittsburgh on talented. Sunday night. He's very talented. <laughs> Divisional game, Mike, what do you say? Uh, that's a fl- You know, anytime you play the Ravens, it's a flip a coin. Those games are always close. It's always uh, a headache for both teams, and it's hard-hitting. And uh, to me, it's whoever the he- – I would say whoever's healthiest going into that game is going to win that game. And do we see a return of the $100 million man, Joe Flacco, or is he just going to ride off his career in mediocrity? I, I, I think this could be one of his last seasons, uh, but I, I do think you'll see a little bit of RG3 or Lamar Jackson in that game as well. I think they will have a package uh, to bring a few series in, and I think Pittsburgh should be ready for that. Let's hope so. Back home against the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta's tough again. You know, once you start getting to this part of the season, uh, a lot of it relies on uh, how you did early on. It's all about getting the momentum. You get the momentum early, it can ride. If you lose the first few games, it could be a headache in the locker room, and it's just miserable to come in. The fingers start getting pointed. So, again, it's whoever has the momentum and whoever's healthiest at that time. Yeah, do not discount Atlanta. They've been hanging around the last couple years, baby. Then you get into the heart of the AFC North. At the Bengals, Cleveland, here in Pittsburgh, at the Ravens. How do you think the Steelers come out of that three-game series, Mike? I think they go two and three. Uh, or Yeah, two out of three on that one. I think uh, Cincinnati and I think Cleveland at home, uh, considering the fact that they might lose that first game, that they'll, uh, <laughs> they'll, they'll bounce back on the second one. Um, uh, again, at Baltimore, it's going to be tough. And, uh, again, that's a, just a toss-up. It's, it be two wins or possibly three. Okay, we're going to find out. And that's where the rubber's going to hit the road at that point in the season. Will Randy Fitchner's new offense be putting up 52 points a game? Will your Steelers have shored up the inside linebacker position? We're going to definitely find out. 
by Thursday, November 8th. 8 p.m. game against the Carolina Panthers right here in Pittsburgh. Mike? Carolina's tough. I, I mean, I, they've got a good defense. Their offense, you've got Cam Newton, who's finally, you know, he seems like he's matured some, and he's and he's got some really good offensive weapons. And I like uh, Christian McCaffrey as well. Yeah. I mean, he's a stud uh, in the backfield for them. And uh, Carolina is, is one of the top teams in the NFC, and I, I think they'll be a, a really good matchup for the Steelers. It's just a test to see where they stand. But I tell you what, the Jacksonville Jaguars stuck a big thumb in your eye last year, made you cry, and sent you home for the holidays with a tear in your eye. Grudge match, Sunday night, November 18th, 830, national TV, down there in Jacksonville. I mean, that's a pick em right now. This is a developmental game. Both teams better be at their best that night. Yeah, I think if, uh, again, it comes down to who's healthy. If, if both teams are healthy... Uh, I have to give the edge to Jacksonville because uh, they will have their players back from the suspension by that point. If they have a healthy uh, Leonard Fournette, oh, look out. We're going to find out. you got to give them the edge because they cleaned your clock last year. Then we head out to the Denver Broncos. I'm taking our Steelers over to Broncos. Yeah, I like them. Um, the Broncos have a lot of uncertainty. They've got a new quarterback with Casey Keenum, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see if he was just kind of a uh, a one-hit wonder, or if he's going to actually be able to back that up. Yeah, and I tell you what, the uh, Broncos just have had no luck finding that next superstar. They thought they did. They've spent a lot of money. All right, I still can't get over saying this. Your Pittsburgh Steelers will be playing host on Sunday, December 2nd, to the Los Angeles Chargers. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a tough one. Even the Chargers, I mean... Honestly, I don't even know who who they really got going on over on that team anymore. They've got Philip Rivers, who's a great competitor, but again, they're traveling. They're home, right? So they're traveling all the way in. Coming all the way here. Yeah, I you got to give the edge to Pittsburgh on that. Hopefully, hopefully. Then this one, man, I'd love to be here, man. My second favorite team, the Oakland Raiders, Sunday, December ninth, eight o'clock, primetime TV. Pittsburgh versus the Oakland Raiders at the Oakland Raider falling in on itself Coliseum. I think, Oakland. I, oh. I think you'll know by uh, by uh, by like week seven who's going to win that game. I think you'll know uh, how Oakland is, you know, where they stand. Uh, they've got a new coach. They've got a good young quarterback. They've got a lot of offensive weapons. Um, it's just, it's again, it depends on health and momentum. And you'll have understand sometimes. When you get a new coach to come in, the team can rally behind them, and sometimes it can kind of just, you know, it takes a, a year or two for things to get going. So we'll find uh, out. I, I think Gruden, they've already rallied behind him. He's that kind of guy. Let, let's say this in a perfect scenario. Uh, both teams are peaking at that time. That's going to be a great game. Then, of course, the next week, the New England Bean Eaters come down to Pittsburgh. All gloves off, no holds barred in that one. I ain't picking nobody. Uh, we'll just see if uh, the new defense can hold down Brady. Exactly. This high-bred defense that you speculate has been built just for Tom Brady. And, of course, we'll go down to New Orleans, get really drunk on Bourbon Street, and probably not go to the game, and I'll have to Google it on Monday to figure out what to do on that one. Then we close against the Cincinnati Bengals at home. So who knows, folks? We're all going to find out, aren't we? I'm Tank Tantlinger, she's Katie Miller, he's, she, he, she's Mike, uh, I'm putting com- the, the people together now. Yeah, you really are, but folks, oh, that is it. Is so that it? 2018 edition no. of Live from Training Camp. We are proud to bring it to you oh. on PA Talk 98.7, 910 AM, 1480 AM, and 97.3 Light FM. Got to thank Latrobe Dairy Queen, Latrobe Auto Group, Latrobe Center Distributing, The Collision Shop, Campbell Tire Service, and Bardini's Country Smokehouse. So, for special guests, Mike McMahon, Huck Chucky, TJ, Brandon, Caitlin, Chris, Hank Bachman, and Hank Cantlinger, I'm Katie Miller, and we will meet you back here next year. Hi, I'm Dave Anderson.